SAs can be broken up into multiple logical firewalls if they are placed into multi-context mode. When ASAs are in multi-context mode, one physical firewall can allocate specific interfaces to multiple logical firewalls. For high security networks, it may be required to force certain networks through dedicated firewalls for additional security. To enable multi-context mode on an ASA, you enter the command mode multiple. Then after the ASA is restarted, it will operationally be in multi-context mode. Once in multi-context mode, there is a system configuration mode that is used to manage contexts and interface allocation. Once contexts have been created in system mode, you now have multiple virtual firewalls running on one physical appliance. You can access each context configuration by entering the command change to context and then the name of the context. Once you change to a context, you can manage the virtual firewall configuration. For example, if you wanted to add an access list to your finance virtual firewall, you would change to that context's configuration and then configure it just like you would a completely different firewall. In addition to the contexts that are added within the system configuration, by default, an admin context is created. The admin context can be accessed by entering the command change to context admin. The admin context configuration is used for management features like AAA, SNMP, and logging. To switch back to system mode, you can use the command change to system, and that'll take you back to the base configuration prompt. Here we are logged into one of our lab ASAs that happens to be running in multi-context mode. You can run the command show mode to confirm your firewall's mode, and as you can see we're in multi-mode. There is certain licensing that is required to run in multi-context mode. If you run the command show version on your firewall, you can see how many security contexts your firewall is licensed for. So for this one, we could have up to five logical firewalls. So currently we're in the system mode. If we enter the command change to context admin, that now takes us into the admin context. Go back to the system mode. All right, so for this lab, we're going to create a context. We'll go to configuration mode and we'll say context and then the name of our context. We'll just call this context lab. And now we've created the lab context and we can now allocate interfaces to the context. Allocate interface, the name of the interface, which is G2. And now if I run show run context, we see that we have our admin context, this test context from an earlier lab, and then our lab context. I'm actually going to delete this test context. Now that we've created this context and we have an interface assigned to it, we can go and configure the context by entering the command change to context, and then the name of our context, which is lab. I missed one important step. When you create your context, you have to give it a configuration URL. So that's where it's going to store the context configuration. Now that I have my config URL applied to the context, I can now switch to the lab configuration. We say show run. It has some default settings. And then you'll notice that we have this interface within our context configuration that we can modify. So now you can see that you only can configure interfaces that have been allocated to your context. And then I'll switch back to system with change to system. And then we can go back and start to create more contexts. Modular policy framework is a method for applying different security features with class maps and policy maps. 
similarly to applying QoS and zone-based firewall configurations on a iOS router. Once traffic is matched with a class map, a policy map is used to apply traffic policies like application inspection, quality of service, and IPS redirection. ASAs by default have a modular policy framework configuration. We can run the command show run class map and show run policy map to see our existing modular policy configuration. So this default list is basically saying match all traffic and for that default class of traffic we want to apply these inspection rules. I usually don't tweak too much stuff in my policy maps. The main reason in the real world that I adjust these are if there's issues with certain protocols like we usually want to turn off ESMTP inspection because it can break email services so we'll go ahead and shut that one off from its additional inspection for that protocol. I've had to disable the skinny inspection and outside of adjusting the default inspection rules to fix application issues then I'm usually adding a class map to redirect traffic to a NetFlow destination or for an IPS sensor. And if you want to confirm matches on your policy map then you can run the command show service policy. To configure the modular policy framework in the ASDM, we go to Configuration, Firewall, and then Service Policy Rules. And this is where you'll find your policy map and class map configuration. And just like I showed you in the access list video, if you click this diagram button, you can see a visual representation of the policy map actions. 